the uh, focus of our unit on classical philosophy in here is going to be uh, the ideas of Plato and Aristotle. And I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, Plato, but first, uh, I like to I would like to mention, talk about a major philosopher of this time, and his name is Socrates. Uh, but for one thing, Socrates never wrote anything. Uh, he's known for his conversations. And so, uh, in ways that he's not as significant to us as Plato and Aristotle, but I do want to talk a little bit about Socrates with you. You see the dates of his life on the board. Socrates is from Athens. And again, he's one of the famous names in Western philosophy, but he never wrote a thing. We know a, pretty, a good bit about his life uh, because uh, Plato was a student of his, and Plato writes about Socrates as we will see a little bit later today. Socrates was a poor man. He was a stonemason. That would be the equivalent today of someone being uh, a bricklayer or a mason. And he liked to engage people in conversation. And so Socrates' method of teaching is to engage people in conversation. And his method of teaching is fairly famous. It's known by three different terms. Sometimes it's called dialectic. Sometimes it's called the Socratic method. And sometimes it's called the Mayutic method. These are all the same thing. These terms are interchangeable. Anyone was free to come and go at will. Socrates did not charge a fee. He described himself as a gadfly. In a, that would be something like today we would call a horsefly. Something that's very irritating. In a myth, a gadfly knocked a man off his horse as he was trying to fly up to heaven and become like a god. So you can see uh, how Socrates sees himself. Socrates would approach people who were sure of what they knew, and he would question them until their certainty was exposed as groundless. And as a result of this, Socrates embarrassed and offended many influential Athenians. This is what ultimately, behind the charges that were brought against him, Socrates was put on trial, and he was charged with corrupting the youth of Athens, specifically by teaching disbelief in the gods, and by teaching rhetoric. We know a little bit about what rhetoric is uh, from Euripides. Your rhetoric is essentially argumentation, the art, the art of persuasion. They charged Socrates with teaching rhetoric, which he did not do, uh, and would be able, you could teach someone uh, uh, to win an argument uh, even if they didn't have the correct uh, nature on their side of the argument here. And as a result, it was a very famous trial of Socrates in Athens. And Plato gives an account of that trial. It's called the Apology. And Socrates was convicted. He was sentenced to death. And he was to drink the juice of a poisonous plant called hemlock. Now, he could have been spared. People of Athens weren't necessarily interested in putting Socrates to death. They just wanted him to give up his teaching. But Socrates refused to do that. And he said very famously, the unexamined life is not worth living. And Socrates uh, did drink the hemlock. There's a famous account of his death uh, in, in one of the dialogues, something that Plato has written. Uh, and you see me making reference here. I'll make reference here to this book in just a few minutes. It contains some of the dialogues of Plato. Socrates devoted his life to the practice of philosophy. He wanted to determine the best way for humans to live 
and the best form of government. But before he could do that, he had to confront the problem of knowledge, and that's where we're going to start today. Um, is certain knowledge possible? And by that I mean, and he would have meant universal truths. Are there uh, uh, truths that have always been true, or true today, and always will be true? The sophists, and we remember them from an earlier lecture, say there is no such thing as objective truth. Everything is merely perspective. The sophists say we can't know for certain the best way to live. We can't know for certain the best form of government. So the practice of philosophy, as Socrates and Plato understand the term, and that is the search for truth, doesn't work according to the sophists. So the first thing Socrates is going to have to do is to defeat the skepticism of the sophists, or at least counter some of their skeptical claims, and that's not such an easy thing to do. We will see how Socrates does this in a dialogue with Plato's called the Meno.